A long time ago, dang, we're talking about 1600s, this guy named Boyle, maybe Boyle down in uh, the Central West End is named after him, probably not. Guy named Boyle said, this is, this is, oh, sorry, <laughs> background. This is an historical approach to how we got that PV is NRT thing. So let's see. It's going to be, uh, well, you've got lowercase, I'm going to put it as N times K times T. And that's, uh, that's also PV is NRT, as you've seen before. But uh, a long time ago, Boyle was doing some experiments in the 1600s, and he found that pressure one times volume one was equal to pressure two times volume two as long as he didn't do anything to the number of particles in there and as long as he didn't do anything to the temperature. So I'm gonna say if you keep those things constant, Mr. Boyle, you will find that this relationship holds true. So this actually gives us the fact that pressure is some constant, which he didn't really know, and he worked on it a little bit, divided by volume. If we just, uh, if we say that this is the constant, right? Equals some constant. He found those things were constant. So that's called Boyle's Law. Set it up like that for him. That's called Boyle's Law, and that was the first step towards getting to PV is N R T or PV is NKT. And then this other guy, Charles, he came around in the 1700s and he started saying, <clears throat> it's nice to see this history, right? Charles Law. Charles started saying, yeah, but if I have the volume in situation one and I divide it by the temperature in situation one, that's equal to the volume in situation two divided by the temperature in situation two. So he was taking bottles of gas and he was changing the volume and the temperature, but he wasn't allowing, oh, what other things could he not change? I guess he couldn't change the number of molecules and he also wasn't allowing the pressure to change. So maybe he was using constant pressure gas thermometer, probably. And uh, he said that was true. And then that leads to the conclusion that, um, ooh, that leads to the conclusion that volume equals temperature times some constant. Because if we say this is equal to some constant, oh, let's go red again, that was fun. This is equal to some constant then you can solve it for volume and say volume is the constant times temperature. So you put these things together and then there was also a guy named, where are we here? Okay, and the, the third part of PV is NRT, PV is NKT, came from Duh's law. Duh said, hey, if I have more stuff, I guess he said that pressure divided by the amount of stuff is equal to pressure two divided by the amount of stuff two. And he put more and more stuff in, the pressure kept going up. He was pumping up a basketball, duh. And uh, then I, I guess he could say that this was a constant. And then we could also conclude that <clears throat> pressure is some constant check it out pressure is some constant times the amount of stuff that you've got. Put it all together and you find the wonderful world of PV is NKT. But let's go back to Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law says pressure and volume are inversely proportional to one another. And we also know that pressure and volume multiplied together has units of energy. Let's see if I can write that down here. Pressure volume has units of joules. Interesting. Now, I'm going to say that if we make a graph, um, and we're going to be making these a lot, this is our first pressure volume graph. If we make a graph of the inverse here, where the pressure goes down as the volume goes up, then uh, let's put a couple lines on this sucker. Then here is one of them. It's an inverse graph, just like you might have to linearize in a lab. And then this is another one of them. And here's another one of them. Guess what? These suckers right here, these inverse graphs, these suckers are called iso. Iso what? Iso means staying the same. Isotherms. This is an isotherm. That is an isotherm. 
and that is an isotherm, which means these are all the same temperature. As I go along this line right here, the temperature is not changing. And remember, the temperature must have something to do with energy, because, oh dang, if P times V has units of energy, if P times V has units of energy, then I guess N times K times T must also have units of energy. Oh dang, because yeah, the units of this side have to be equal to the units of that side, and the units of K worked out as joules per Kelvin, so multiplied by temperature in Kelvin, you're gonna get joules back there. That's a pretty good deal. So we're saying that this is energy, and that's energy, and so temperature affects the energy. Which one of these do you think has more energy? Is it this curve with more energy, that curve with more energy, or that curve with more energy? I guess I'm asking which of these three curves is the highest temperature, because you kind of have a feel that the temperature corresponds to the amount of energy. Higher temperature means more energy captured in a gas. Oh, we're really getting into thermodynamics here. I guess I'm just gonna throw, maybe you've had enough time to think about this. I'm gonna say that this might be 100 Kelvin, this might be 200 Kelvin, and this might be 300 Kelvin. So we can really see these. I'm not gonna just pose it as a question. I really want you to see that this is an isotherm. So everywhere along this green line a gas goes, it might have the same temperature. But if you wanted to change temperature, you'd have to go this way. Since pressure times volume is a constant, you can't get any more energy on that line. The only way to get it to change would be like, ooh, what if we could keep, oh, we could do a lot of different things, right? This graph is gonna be really fun for us. If we keep a certain volume and increase the pressure, then we could get more and more energy. Or if we keep a certain pressure and increase the volume, we could get more and more energy. And we'd also be changing the temperature, assuming that we're not changing N. See these four variables we get to play with? What fun. We get P to change, and V to change, and N to change, and T to change. We're gonna get a lot of cool equations. Then, we need to look at Charles' law. Here's what I want to say about Charles. In Charles' law, we can make a cool graph that shows how V depends on temperature. And this is, I mean, not really a cool graph, it's kind of a sissy graph. You're not gonna like it too much. Let's just slam it right here because it's not so awesome. I wanna see how volume changes as temperature changes. And it turns out, it turns out that that's linear. As I increase temperature, I increase volume. And so I get a graph that looks like that. Or I get a graph that looks like that. Or I get a graph that looks like that. That was unpleasant. And the interesting thing about this is that these three graphs represent different pressures. Interesting. Which one of these do you think is a higher pressure? The slope of this graph determines the pressure, right? Think about that for a moment and tell me which of those three graphs is a higher pressure. Pressure. Boop. <laughs> All right, great. I'm going to go back to my equation. PV is NKT. And I'm going to figure out that if I've got V divided by T, that's my slope, right? This is typical lab analysis stuff. If I were making this plot just like Mr. Charles did, then I would find that V divided by T, <gasps> V divided by T from this equation, dang, is going to be N times K over P. So the higher pressure corresponds to the smaller slope. This might be 50 kilopascals. This might be 100 kilopascals. And this sucker right here might be 150 kilopascals. Cool, there are a couple other ways to see it too, but I thought I'd do it the lab analysis way. And if you, uh, oh man, you've got this beautiful linear thing, you could actually determine the pressure from a volume temperature experiment. Love it. Again, we're assuming that you're not changing the number of particles in there. And then Does Law, we don't really need to talk about Does Law. 